indicators. Previously, I told already the growth and development and milestones, etc. Now I am going to tell regarding the MCH indicators. This topic is very, very important. You may get in a statistics as a statistical problem regarding the mortality rates, etc. So here, the main stage indicators regarding the mortalities are maternal mortality and the neonatal mortality. Under neonatal mortality, you will have early neonatal mortality, late neonatal mortality, perinatal mortality, and morbidity, and etc. So here, the first one is the maternal mortality. Maternal mortality means it is death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of duration and the site of pregnancy, from any cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy and its management, but not from an accident or incidental causes. That is the definition for maternal mortality. Okay, so death of the woman. And a screenshot, Carla. Death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of duration of pregnancy and the site of pregnancy. That means site of means the pregnancy may be in the tube, fallopian tubes, or pregnancy may be in the ovary or maybe in the abdomen. So irrespective of site of pregnancy, for many cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy. For any cause, that means if the mother, if the antenatal mother had hypertension during the pregnancy and died due to hypertension, or the mother had any infections or diabetes, eclampsia, etc. So they are all aggravated by the pregnancy or its management. During the management, if the mother dies, all of them will come under maternal mortality, but not from an accident or an incidental causes. That is the definition for maternal mortality. Okay, this is very, very important. Everybody will ask during the viva the definition for the maternal mortality. And it is it, you may get an essay question regarding the maternal mortality. So that is that's why it's very important. You should know everybody should know the causes for maternal mortality. So you can call it as late maternal deaths. Late maternal deaths means if the death of the woman had a direct or indirect obstacle cause more than 42 days, but less than one year. So I told already the maternal mortality is death of a mother during pregnancy and the termination of the pregnancy within 42 days of delivery. But in late maternal deaths means the death occurs either a direct or indirect cause the mother uh, died more than 42 days of delivery, but less than one year. That is called a late maternal death. And a pregnancy-related death. If the death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of cause of death. It's a pregnancy-related death. That is the death of a woman during the pregnancy or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy. OK. So what are the causes for this maternal mortality? We can divide it into two groups. That is direct obstacle deaths and indirect obstacle deaths. So the death, the maternal mortality may be, we can divide it into two groups. One is direct obstacle deaths. Second one is indirect obstacle deaths. Direct obstacle death means the labor from perpurium or in a, that is labor from perpetual means may be died due to perpetual infections or in interventions or omissions or incorrect treatment. If the mother has not delivered in a, with the five claims, so she may go into perpetual infections, so she may die of perpetual infection. And if the mother had a heavy hemorrhage, if you don't have, if you don't get the intervention to prevent the hemorrhage, the mother may die of an incorrect treatment. That it is not blood, blood transfusion if it is not available at that time. If the mother had a severe bleeding, the mother may die of. And the, some are from chain of events resulting from any of the above reasons leads to 
maternal mortality. So that is the direct obstetric death. And indirect obstetric death are, they are resulting from previous existing diseases. That is, diseases which are involved during the pregnancy, which was not due to direct obstetric cause, but which was aggravated by physiological effect of pregnancy. That is, if the mother had previous cardio cardiovascular disease, or if the mother had any infections like HIV infection or tuberculosis, they are all, they are the indirect obstetric causes for the death. So the only advice you have to give is, she should not become a pregnant till the infection complete, until she had cured, if she had any cardiovascular disease. So that you have to educate the mother regarding her defect, her severe severity of the health problem if she becomes pregnant. So these are all the indirect obstacle causes. So here, if you see the main causes for maternal mortality, here if you see the percentage, the 24% of maternal deaths are due to severe bleeding. And 15% of deaths are due to infections. And 12% are due to eclampsia. And 8% of maternal deaths are due to ostic labor. And 13% are due to unsafe abortions and 8% are other direct causes, and 20% are of indirect cause. So these are the causes for maternal deaths. And if you see the, and the states, if you estimated the maternal mortality in India, here, if you state wise, if you see, 74% 74 of 74 per thousand lives in Andhra Pradesh. So maternal mortality rate in Andhra Pradesh is 74 per thousand lives, whereas in Assam it is 237 per thousand lives, whereas in least one is Kerala, which is 46 per thousand lives. So it is mainly the if you see why the Kerala the maternal mortality is very very less means due to literacy, high literacy rate in Kerala, the maternal mortality is less. So the literacy rate is play an important role to improve the maternal health. Okay, if in a country-wise, if you see in India, the maternal mortality rate is 130 per thousand lives. Okay, uh, so one lakh population. And whereas in, in Andhra Pradesh, it is 74 Sorry, not libers. It is a 74 per 1 lakh libers. Okay? And then, what are the major causes in India? What are major causes for maternal deaths in India? Here, if you see, the 29% of maternal deaths in India are due to hemorrhage. And 19% of maternal deaths in India are due to anemia. And 9% are others. And 8% are taxemia pregnancy and 9% are abortion, and 10% are obstetric labor, and 16% are sepsis. So the major cause for maternal mortality in India is 29% is hemorrhage, and 16% is sepsis, and the remaining others are according to this. So what are the determinants in India? If you see the causes for maternal mortality, so they are obstetric causes and non-obstetric causes. Obstetric causes are toxemia pregnancy. Toxemia pregnancy, it is mainly due to maternal mortality rate indicates the healthcare delivery system, whether it is going on properly in the country or not. That is the main role to know the healthcare delivery system, assessment of the assessment of the healthcare delivery system in that, in that community. So if you, that's why I already told already regarding the for every 1,000 population, there is one Anganwadi center. For every 5,000 population, there is one sub-center. In sub-center, multi-purpose health worker female, her duty is to register the, all the antenatal mothers immediately. The first registration of the antenatal mother is very, very important. So once she registered, she will have the follow-up of the antenatal mothers. Here, the toxemia of pregnancy is mainly due to the previous, if she had a high blood pressure, which leads to toxemia pregnancy. 
if the man can have if the multi purpose health worker female she if she is following that mother so he can prevent the hypertension thereby we can prevent eclampsia in the antenatal mother so that is the biopsic cause main one is the ataxemia pregnancy and the second one is hemorrhage hemorrhage means if the mother is anemic if the mother is malnourished she is prone for hemorrhage that is a postpartum hemorrhage in that mother that is the main the second cause for the neonatal mortality so this hemorrhage can be prevented if she was followed properly by the multi purpose health worker female by preventing the anemia in that mother in india main cause for anemia is it is due to number one is due to malaria number second one is the due to parasitic or uh, parasitic infestations here the i told already the primary hemorrhage and the secondary hemorrhage Prim primary hemorrhage is uh, is due to an injuries at the time of delivery and the secondary hemorrhage is due to some uh, involvement etc so this first one is the hemorrhage is mainly due to if the mother is anemic she is prone for an hemorrhage exclu exclusively so anemia means if the if the multi purpose health worker female registered the antenatal mother and if she gives iron folic acid tablets during their health checkup we can prevent the anemia in that mother lack of care on the maternal on the mother which leads to anemia so the worm infestation or the parasitic infestation and the malaria these are the two causes for anemia in the antenatal mother so these two should be controlled by taking care during the antenatal period antenatal checkup and then infections that is during the antenatal period if the mother is having any infections especially the reproductive tract infections or tuberculosis or any other hiv infection or syphilis all these are to be treated completely during the antenatal period thereby we can prevent the infection during the postnatal period that is the main role is she has to follow the case and if there is any infection she has to refer the case to the medical officer who is sitting in the primary health center that is her main role and then obstructed labor obstructed labor means cephalopelvic disproportion if there is a cephalopelvic disproportion it is very difficult to deliver the baby so that requires the cesarean section so that much of knowledge she should know that is the delivery if they conducted by a trained daya she can immediately refer the cases to the higher institutes to prevent the deaths during the due to obstetric labor and then unsafe abortions So some of them are using the illegal or pregnancies, which causes the unsafe abortions, which itself leads to mortality. So these are the main obstetric causes for the maternal mortality. So whenever you have asked the question regarding the maternal mortality, you have to write the definition and the rates and then the causes for maternal mortality. So here these are the maternal the, the obstetric causes. Whereas whereas about the non-obstetric causes are. that is the anemia as i told already the mainly anemia in in maternal when a pregnant woman are mainly due to malaria and worm infestation so he treat the malaria and treat the worm infestation here as you know the especially in the rural areas where the mother is more anemic especially in the more rural areas so an uneducated woman and illiterate women are more prone for anemia maybe due to poverty or maybe due to lack of food, nutritious food and mainly due to the women who are working with barefoot are prone for sorry ramesh the women who are working they will walk with barefoot so the in india most of the rural areas people are having the poor field defecation the labova the rabbit uh, from larva which is developed in the um, uh, egg that will break up that will reach the grass and the, whenever the woman the person walk with the bare foot it will pierce the skin of the foot and through the lymphatic it reaches through the blood stream it reaches the 
called bronchioles. From the bronchioles, it up, it goes up, and whenever they coughed out, they will swallow that, and it reaches the small intestine. There it hatches, and reaches to form the the number of worms. That is a, a hookworms. So these hookworms are main cause for anemia in antenatal mother. So if the mother is anemic, we have to treat the anemia with deworming. And also malaria, if the mother had an, malaria, treat the malaria, thereby we can prevent anemia in the antenatal mother. And associated diseases, that is under the non-obstic causes, associated diseases are cardiovascular disease, or are health incompatibilities, or any endocrine disorders, etc. And then mad tumors or fibroids, uterine fibroids, uterine fibroids, etc. And then malignancies and then accidents. These are the non obstetric causes. If you see the medical causes, age, I told already, the maternal motor, maternal deaths are more in if the mother is too young and too old. So too young means less than 15 years of age. Too old means more than 30 years of age or 40 years of age are prone for maternal deaths. And parity, yes, that is the two more pregnancies, two more pregnancies, multi-parity. If the mother had a multi-parity, more number of children are prone for deaths. And then two close pregnancies. If the space between the two pregnancies is less than two years, so they she, she prone for maternal deaths and a fam large family size and malnutrition and poverty and illiteracy. So malnutrition means if the mother is malnourished. As I told already, the every Anganwadi centers, the beneficiaries are matern maternal, the antenatal mother, postnatal mother, less than five years children and uh, the reproductive years group. They are all the beneficiaries for the Anganwadi centers. In Anganwadi centers, they will give the 300 kilocalories and 8 to 10 grams of protein for all. If the mother is malnourished, she actually she requires 500 kilocalories and then 10 to 20 grams of protein. So if the mother is malnourished, so the Angan in Anganwadi centers, they will provide double the quantity of food to the mother. Okay, so that is the importance of Anganwadi centers. So these are the, the beneficiaries that they will provide egg to all the antenatal mother and they will give milk to all the antenatal mother, antenatal and postnatal mothers. So the poverty that itself leads to malnutrition, that itself leads to anemia, that itself leads to mortality. And illiteracy, if you say there are so many studies where the high educated mother having the less mortality rate and the low educated mothers having the high mortality rate. So illiteracy and ignorance. These are all the, some medical causes and the lack of maternity services. That is the lack of maternity services is deliveries which are conducted by the untrained diets. Okay, the deliveries, they are not maintaining the five cleans during the delivery. So what are the five cleans? Clean surface, clean cartai, clean blade, and uh, clean hands, and uh, no applicant to the umbilical cut. If they she maintained, if she delivers the clean in a clean by applying these cleans, five cleans, so we can prevent infection. So if the delivery was conducted by the untrained dye, so the maternal mortality is very high. And poor communication and transport facilities. So if the mother had uh, a sudden sudden complication during the delivery, it may be, either it may be in the form of a hemorrhage or it may be in the form of an obstruction. So in the prisma, especially the cephalopelvic disproportion, she requires the higher center. So I told her recently you had, you might have heard the news two or three days back, one antenatal mother, because of lack of transport facilities, they have taken to some Mahabubnagar hospital from there, they have uh, they referred the cases to the Hyderabad, that is in you know, Gandhi or Osmani, they refer the cases like that. They will be late in the transport of patient, late in, to reach the hospital. That is a place to the death of the mother and also death of the infant. 
So lack of transport facilities is also the pure communi uh, poor communication and lack of transport facilities also one of the cause for the maternal mortality. And how to prevent the maternal mortality? That is, that is the first referral leaders, that is for the emergency after care. That is, whenever you get a doubt, the ma mother has to be immediately referred the case to the higher centers so where the blood transfusion, the blood transfusion facilities are available in that hospital. That is main importance regarding the first referral unit. Unnecessarily sending the mother from one place to another place is a waste of. That is, she has to send to the correct place where the all the obstetrician care is. Is easily available after care is essential for the antenatal mother. So here the preventive measures are early registration of pregnancy. I told already the multi-purpose health worker female she has to register the case. Thereby she can, if once she registered the case, she can follow the mother throughout her pregnancy till delivery. So early registration. And so. If you are to be, if you are a medical officer in the primary health care, so the main thing is you can observe whether the work, whether the multipurpose health worker is working properly or not. How to observe, how to assess the multipurpose health worker's uh, work means registration of pregnancy. I told already how to register the calculate the registration of pregnancy, birth rate into population. The birth rate if it is a twenty five per thousand population into uh, thousand libraries into Population of the sub center is 5,000, so you will get 125. So, from 10% is uh, if you get correct to factor, so it will get the 138%. So, 138 antenatal mothers should be registered by the multi purpose health worker female. At least half of the registration is necessary for the multi purpose to assess the work of the multi purpose health worker female. So, this is very, very important. And minimum four antenatal checkups. Once she registered the case, if she notices that the mother is having any hypertensive symptoms and signs or any preeclampsic sign, she has to refer the case to the medical officer situated in the multi in the primary health centers. The antenatal, she has to so at least Four antenatal checkups, so she has to undergo all the antenatal mothers. So medical officer has to, the female medical officer has to examine all the antenatal mothers. And dietary supplementation, including correction of anemia. As I told already, if the mother is anemic, if the mother is malnourished, she requires the supplementary food in the form of um, uh, the, uh, the 500, 400, 500 kilocalories and 10 to 20 grams of protein to the mother. Extra food should be given to the mother. And she has to educate the mother. You have to educate the mother regarding the food as she is a malnourished woman. And you have to correct the anemia with by giving iron folic acid tablets. Iron folic acid, the, at least she has to take 100 iron folic acid tablets throughout her antenatal period. So, 100 milligrams of elemental iron and 500 micrograms of folic acid. That if the mother is anemic, she requires the double the dose of iron folic acid tablets. And the prevention of infection and hemorrhage during the birth period. So prevention of infection if the mother is having any infection. So you yeah, refer the case to the nearer primary health center to treat the infection. So the medical officer has to treat the infection during the antenatal period and the hemorrhage during the perperium. So prevent, uh, and then the delivery at the time of hemorrhage. So the blood transfusion facilities should be there at the time of delivery. And the prevention of complications like eclampsia, malpresentation, and the ruptured uterus. So the, these are the complications during the antenatal mother. So first of all, we have to, we have to examine the antenatal mother and record the blood pressure regularly. And you have to see the danger signals in the antenatal mother. So what are the danger signals? Edema feet and uh, blurring vision, headache. These are all the danger signals. If the mother is having the blurring vision, headache, edema feet, high blood pressure, 
they leads to eclampsia, pre-eclampsia and eclampsia. So if these features, so signs and symptoms are present in the antenatal mother, means she has to refer the case to the to the prime medical officer. Thereby, we can treat the case. Thereby, we can prevent the death due to eclampsia. And malpresentations is the one of the main cause that is the malpresentation that she is having. If the mother is having, we had a sudden prolapse, uh, cord prolapse, or prolapse hand, or bridge presentation. These are all the complications which leads to death of the both infant and mother. And the rupture uterus, if the mother is having not proper contractions during the labor, if you give unnecessary syntocin and drip, which is conducted by the, uh, any other uh, RMPs, so may prone for ruptured uterus. So she requires an eclampsia, requires a section. So these are all the complications which leads to uh, maternal mortality. So these are the preventive measures, is prevention of complications of eclampsia, malpresentation, and ruptured. Once she was diagnosed with having the malpresentation, she requires the institutional delivery. And the treatment for medical conditions. If she was diagnosed with the hypertension and diabetes, you have to treat the hypertension and diabetes during the antenatal period. And anti-malaria and tetanus toxide. If mother is having a regular thorough checkup, she can receive the tetanus toxide immunization. Tetanus toxide immunization. So anti-malarial treatment, thereby we can prevent anemia and a tetanus toxide vaccination, thereby we can prevent, prevent tetanus in the mother. And clean delivery practices. I told already by observing the five cleans, you can prevent infection in the postnatal period. The clean delivery practices is very, very important. And training the local dias and the multi-purpose health worker female to conduct the normal deliveries in a clean manner. So the training by the local dias is very, very important. Only the lab alone, the trained dias to be conducted the deliveries, but the untrained dias, which leads to mortality. Institutional delivery for the woman with a bad obstetric history and the risk factor. If the mother is having a bad obstetric history or any risk factors, risk factors, the cardiovascular factors, or the, any anomalies, she requires the uh, institutional delivery. That is the bad obstetric history that means if the mother is having a previous uh, intrauterine death or previous hemorrhagic thromboembolic manifestations or previous anomalies, congenital anomalies, or the previous um, uh, condition of the mother. So they, um, that leads to bad obstetric history, maybe leads to instant maternal mortality. So the institution delivery those women, for women, those who are having the bad obstetric history and risk factors. And promotion of family planning. So as I told already, the delivery is too small, too small, short period, lack of knowledge during in the mothers, the short space between the first pregnancy and the second pregnancy. So may cause for maternal mortality. So promotion of family planning in those type of mothers. And identification of every maternal death and search for its cause. So we had to identify, once the mother was dead, means we had to identify the antenatal mothers, what could be the cause for death, and we had to search for the cause, and we had to improve the healthcare system in that community. And if you see the mortalities in the infants and the childhood, I told already the indicators for the MMCH services are maternal mortality and neonatal mortality. Here, in infancy and childhood mortality, so first of all, we have to measure the level of the health. So the mortality in infancy and childhood, assess, we can assess the, how the healthcare delivery system is going on in that community. And also to assess overall socioeconomic development in that community. So if you see the in infant mortality and the neonatal mortality and stillbirth and etc. Here, 
if the death occurs from 28 weeks of pregnancy to birth that is called stillbirth stillbirth is different this is very very important please be concentrate on this because you may get as a the statistical problem which carries much more marks in the practicals so what is a stillbirth what is a fetal death what is early neonatal death what is late neonatal death what is post neonatal death still but means death occurs from 28 weeks of pregnancy to birth fetal death means that is delivery of the products from the mother the delivery of contraceptive conceptual products from the mother's womb without taking any breath etc that is called the fetal death fetal death that occur in the mother's womb without taking without having any live features okay that is the delivery of conception products from the mother's womb without showing any live symptoms that is called fetal death still but means the birth, that is the products weighs that is the birth that weighs 1000 grams that is or the gestation period is 28 weeks of pregnancy that is the still birth okay and regarding the perinatal deaths perinatal means peri means around perinatal death means if the death occurs between 28 weeks of pregnancy to 7 days of delivery okay so if the death occurs in from 28 weeks 28 weeks means the baby the, if, the, if she had a delivery in the 28 weeks of pregnancy the baby will be survive that is a premature baby so that's why they are having the uh, guide the, the, the main mark from 28 weeks so 20, from if the death occurs from 28 weeks of pregnancy to 7 days after that is after delivery we can call it as perinatal mortality so in infant mortality we can divide it into neonatal mortality in the neonatal mortality early neonatal mortality late neonatal mortality post neonatal mortality okay in the neonatal mortality early neonatal late neonatal and post neonatal Early, early neonatal means if death occurs from birth to 7 days death occurs from birth to 7 days it is called as early neonatal death if death occurs from 7 days to 28 days that is within 1 month if death occurs from within 1 month from 7 days to 28 days it is called as late neonatal death if death occurs from 28 days to one year it is called post neonatal death okay the infant death means if death occurs from birth to one year it is called as infant mortality so i hope you can understand what is neonatal death what is infant mortality so neonatal means early neonatal late neonatal and post neonatal early neonatal means death from birth to 7 days late neonatal means from 7 days to 28 days and the post neonatal neonatal means 28 days to 1 year and infant mortality means from birth to 1 year we can call it as infant mortality i will tell you what are the importance so still birth means it is applied a fetus born of weighing 1000 grams or more which is associated with gestation period of 28 weeks that is a still birth that is fetus born of weighing it 1000 grams or more which is associated with the gestation period of 28 weeks and feed that is a fetal death weighing more than 1000 grams at birth by total live birth plus still birth in 2000 that is called the that is the still birth calculation so causes for still birth what are the causes for still birth it is high blood pressure and its complication 
So still birth means it may be during the antenatal mother. That's why the mother should uh, should have registered and should follow the case. We will record the blood pressure regularly. Whenever she comes to the hospital, she has to uh, check the, her blood pressure is the uh, first thing. So high blood pressure and its complication is one of the cause for still birth rate and RH incompatibility. That's why we have to do blood grouping and testing and RH typing to know the RH incompatibility. So RH incompatibility is also one of the cause for stillbirth. And diabetes is one of the cause for stillbirth. And premature rupture of membrane. Premature rupture of membrane is also cause for the stillbirth. And multiple pregnancies. That is more uh, twins or triplets or quadruplets. These are the cause for stillbirth. And then cord anomalies. That is the um, umbilical cord anomalies is also one of the cause for uh, stillbirth. And fetal malformations. The fetal malformations are in any fetal malformation, any congenital anomalies of the fetus is the cause for the stillbirth. And the placental anomalies, told already regarding the placental anomalies, placenta may be due to percreta or increta. These are the addictions of the placenta or the um, uh, twisting of the placenta and uh, are the guard around the neck of the placenta. These are all the one of the causes for the stillbirth. Stillbirth rate is around nine per thousand in our country. So now it is reduced to four per thousand in our country. And here, even the neonatal already regarding the perinatal mortality. That period includes both stillbirth and neonatal deaths. Here in the perinatal mortality means it includes stillbirth and early neonatal death. As I told already, what is meant to be a perinatal mortality? So neonatal perinatal mortality, neonatal early neonatal mortality, late neonatal mortality, and post neonatal mortality. So perinatal mortality means it includes that is 28 weeks of gestation. If death occurs in the 28, 28 weeks of gestation to seven days of birth, we can call it as perinatal mortality. It includes both stillbirth and early neonatal deaths. Perinatal mortality that is lasts from 28 weeks of gestation to seventh day after birth. If the baby is included in perinatal statistics, if you see the birth weight more than 1000 grams and gestation period of 28 weeks of birth, if it is not available and you can calculate the crown heel health length of the fetus, that is 35 centimeters, if both are not available. The birth weight is more than 1,000 grams. So how to calculate the perinatal statistics? One is, if the birth, birth weight is more than 1,000 grams and the gestation period is 28 weeks of pregnancy, if birth weight is not available, and if it, both of them are not available, you can have the crown and heel length of the fetus. That is the to for the to calculate the perinatal statistics. That is late fetal deaths plus early neonatal deaths. Late fetal deaths means 28 weeks of gestation or more plus neonatal death, early neonatal, the first week in one year, weighing over 1000 grams at birth by live birth in the same year into 1000. That is the perinatal. The still birth and the early neonatal deaths are included because the factors which are responsible for these two types of deaths are of similar. Still births and the early neonatal deaths are the responsible factors are similar. It gives a good indication the extent of pregnancy wastage as well as the quality and the quantity of healthcare that is available to the mother and newborn. That is more important. And how the healthcare delivery system is going on in that community. That's why the main thing is the registration of the antenatal mothers in the multipurpose health worker. By that registration number, we can see, we can have an idea whether the healthcare delivery system is going on regularly, correctly or not. Once she registered, means she can refer the cases 
if the mother is having any complications. And it reflects the results of maternity care. So here, if you see the incidence rate, it is about 35 per thousand lives. Now it is not 35, now it is about, it is about 18 per thousand lives. And here, <clears throat> what are the, main, the affecting the factors, that is social and biological factors, variables influence in it. That is the low socioeconomic status. The one of the main cause for uh, mortality, perinatal mortality, is low socioeconomic status and high maternal age. I told you already the low maternal age, high maternal age, low space, these are all the main cause. The high maternal is more than 35 years of age. Can I crash it? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Low maternal age, that is less than 16 years of age. Yeah. So the social and biological variables in between the perinatal mortality rate are low socioeconomic status, very high maternal age that is more than 35 years of age, very low maternal age that is less than 16 years of age, very high parity that is more than fifth pregnancy with a short interval, more than fifth pregnancy with a short interval, high parity, and heavy smoking, that is more than 10 cigarettes per day, and a short stature, that is less than 140 centimeters, is the biological variables that influence in the perinatal mortality. And poor past heart history, as and then malnutrition and severe anemia, and the multiple pregnancies, more number, more pregnancies, the twins and quadruples, etc. These are all the main biological factors that influence the poor perinatal mortality rate. So, okay, the multiple pregnancies, malnutrition, and severe anemia. There, we can prevent, we can have the improved nutrition status, and we can prevent the anemia. And the short stage, educate the mother, the short stage, the women are prone for uh, mortality, both maternal and perinatal mortality. She requires a cesarean section and a poor past obstetric history. That is, if she had uh, any complications during the delivery, a thrombomatic manifestation, or any congenital anomalies, or any abnormal uh, presentations, etc. And what are the causes for perinatal mortality? First one is antenatal causes. Antenatal causes, so here, the main thing is, first of all, if you think about the mother, antenatal causes are, are very, very important causes, main cause for the postnatal perinatal mortality. So here, antenatal causes is hypertension. If the mother is having the hypertension, if you diagnose in an early stage, if you treat the mother with the antihypertension, so we can prevent the mortality in the infants, that is perinatal mortality. And then cardiovascular disease. If the mother is having cardiovascular disease, postpone the pregnancy or avoid pregnancy during the, and in the uh, avoid pregnancy in those cases. And if the mother is having a diabetes, so if you treat this, diagnose early, treat the diabetes. Give, she should be in a, in a insulin therapy throughout her pregnancy, throughout her antenatal period. 
And if the mother is having a tuberculosis infections, treat the tuberculosis. And if the mother is having anemia, you just think about it. What could be the cause for anemia in the uh, mother? And uh, mother, maybe due to uh, malaria or a worm infestation, the parasitic infestation. Treat the anemia by giving iron folic acid tablets. Treat the malaria by giving anti-malaria drug. Treat the worm infestation by giving by deworming the mother. So these are the these are the maternal causes and pelvic causes. Pelvic causes is the infant the perinatal mortality may be due to some of the pelvic diseases like uterine myoma or endometriosis or ovarian tumors. The or any uterus abnormalities, uterine abnormalities, or uterine myomas or endometriosis and ovarian tumors may be the cause for the perinatal mortality. And anatomical defects like uterine anomalies are incompetent cervix. If you see the incompetent cervix, if you diagnose during the antenatal period, so the incompetent cervix can be two, you can do this that is a circuit thereby you can prevent the early delivery of the, then the immediate the abortions, etc. You can prevent the perinatal mortal, premature delivery, etc. That now can prevent the perinatal mortality. Cervical surplus. If you do cervical surplus in incompetent cervix, we can prevent perinatal mortality. And endocrinal imbalance. And some endocrinal imbalance and inadequate uterine preparations. That inadequate uterine preparation means too early pregnancy, too early age of pregnancy leads to inadequate uterine preparation and endocrine imbalance leads to perinatal mortality. And blood incompatibilities. As I told already, the mother is in a, when the mother comes for a checkup, you can have to do for blood grouping and test matching on HB percentage. So if the mother is having any incompatible RH incompatibility, we have to give RH immunoglobulin. Thereby we can prevent the perinatal mortality. And malnutrition. You have to improve the malnutrition. If the mother is having a malnourished woman, so it depends upon the literacy rate. If the mother is a high educated mother, so there may be low mother, uh, the low socioeconomic group of people are prone for high malnutrition. So the low socioeconomic group means if the mother is ill educated, un uneducated woman, are more prone for malnutrition because it's some taboos which leads to malnutrition and toxemia pregnancy. So we can prevent the toxemia pregnancy by having the regular antenatal checkups, by regarding the, regarding the hypertension, etc. We can prevent toxemia pregnancy and antipartum hemorrhage. Antipartum hemorrhage, so if you diagnose early, we can prevent it and congenital defects, etc. And advanced maternal age. As I tell you already, high maternal age, low maternal age, and the low space, these are all the causes for both the maternal mortality and perinatal mortality. And what we have to divide it into causes are intranatal causes and postnatal causes and sorry. So here, what are the intranatal causes for the perinatal mortality? That is birth injuries, that is conducting the delivery by uh, in an abnormal manner, conducting the deliveries in abnormal, the baby is having a cord around the neck. So if you pull, if the, the, the deliveries who are conducting the deliveries in that woman, if she pulls rapidly, so it will have you know, hanging over the baby just like a hanging. So that was there by the infantile right. So that is the uh, birth at the time of the very specific side. In a proper manner, the mortality will occur due to asphyxia and the prolonged effort, unnecessary prolongation during the delivery, with the prolonged effort time and after complications, etc. And what are the postnatal causes? Intranatal causes and Postnatal causes, intranatal causes, and postnatal causes for the perinatal mortality rate. We have to divide it into three to know the perinatal mortality. Antenatal causes, intranatal causes, 
and postnatal causes. In the postnatal causes, it is prematurity. The early delivery, prematurity, and the respiratory distress syndrome. The baby will have distress syndrome, which itself leads to perinatal mortality. And the respiratory and elementary infections and congenital anomalies, congenital anomalies, and these are the causes for during the postnatal cancer, the prematurity, respiratory distress syndrome, and the respiratory and the elementary infections and the congenital anomalies. And you can see, you can have the unknown causes. Some So the perinatal, but the causes for perinatal mortality are intranatal, antenatal causes, intranatal causes, and the postnatal causes. So another thing is the unknown causes, which that is the unknown causes of the, that is the socioeconomic causes. Like the lack of lack of poverty and lack of social environmental sanitation and the unclean deliveries which are conducted in an unclean manner in a lack of social economic factors and then the houses which are not clean which itself leads to perinatal mortality and the way of conducting the delivery is also very important that are the causes for perinatal so what are the interventions to reduce the perinatal mortality so the implementations to reduce the perinatal mortality are advise the woman with a medical problem to avoid the pregnancy till health problems are approached. The first thing is put the mother tuberculosis. Let her be clear in the tuberculosis. If the mother is having any syphilitic infection, treat the syphilis. And if the mother is having hypertension and diabetes, treat the hypertension and diabetes follow properly. And then, if the she is having any congenital anomalies, so that is cardiovascular anomalies, so avoid the pregnancy to that inter that type of mothers. So avoid the medical problems if she is having anything. Avoid the pregnancy till the health improves. And it's cutting stock side immunization to the, all the internet mothers and the iron folic acid tablets for all the internet mothers to prevent anemia. Iron folic acid tablets, that is 100, 100, element, 100 tablets of iron folic acid tablets throughout her antenatal period. If the mother is anemic, give double the dose of iron folic acid. To prevent malnutrition by giving supplementary food in the Anganwadi centers. A mother should have at least 500 kilocalories, 10 to 20 grams of protein daily. The early treatment of maternal complications. Treat compli maternal complications, treat them during the antenatal period. And the institution delivery, those who are having the high risk mother, they request institution delivery. They don't have to be during the antenatal care. Who is a high risk mother? Short stage or multiple pregnancies are too early pregnancy. These are all the previous history of any complications during the delivery. These are all the, these are all comes under the high risk of mother. And the mother is having any, any complicated previous history of eclampsia, etc. So the, that type of mother, the previous history of hemorrhage, previous history of thromboembolic manifestation, previous history of infections, that type of requires institutional delivery. So the institution delivery for the women who are having the high risk cases and the immediate referral and appropriate care of emergency and obstetric complications. If the mother is having a, any complications of the delivery, she should be referred immediately to those centers where the obstetric facilities are available, where the blood transfusion facilities are available. That is more important. The unnecessarily in the mother from one place to another place, it's, it's very really bad. So that is the that is the transport facility should be there, communication should be there. So immediate referral and appropriate care of the emergency after complications by referring the cases. And the safe and clean delivery practices, there will be a little mother and then essentially newborn care. And the resuscitation of the newborns without spotting if the, ma if the baby is not having the cry of the baby, so resuscitate the newborns. 
that is more important keeping the head low and the uh, legs up and then stimulate the respiration by tapping on the back of the feet that is resuscitate the newborns without or if the baby is not having to cry immediately after delivery and that is regarding the prenatal mortality and then neonatal mortality so neonatal mortality applied to death during the neonatal period it is commencing at the birth to ending to 28 completed days of the half birth okay that is the neonatal i will tell you the, the next class what are the causes for neonatal mortality Okay, and the neonatal means we get early neonatal, late neonatal, and post neonatal. You take the Parker textbook and read out the perinatal maternal mortality and the perinatal mortality. So this topic is very very important both for your personal experience and also for the examination point of view. You may have an exam after the lockdown, so be prepared. Be read all these topics mch okay thank you Rama.